Good day grade 11s, welcome to week 36. In this lesson we're going to carry on looking at paper 2 questions. Now it says define the term molar mass of a substance, calculate the number of moles of water in 100 grams of water, methyl benzoate is a compound used in wada wada wada, determine the empirical formula, then um, define the term empirical formula, then determine the empirical formula, and then ask what's its molecular mass. Okay, so first of all molar mass. The molar mass is basically what? It is the mass of one mole, but you can't say that. So the molar mass of a substance is the mass of one mole where one mole is um, equal to the number of elementary particles there are in one twelfth of carbon 12. Okay, so you need to go and learn these and basically you need to download your exam guideline or your CAPS document and go learn the definitions as stated there. Now it says calculate the number of moles of water in 100 grams of water. So we know the formula is number of moles is equal to mass over molar mass. If you're wondering where I'm getting that from, um, I actually do know it, but it is on your periodic table. So this is your mass in grams and this is your molar mass as calculated from your periodic table. So in order to do this question, grade 11, you need a periodic table because we're going to be using it all the way through. So you need to go and get your periodic tables now. I'm not going to pop one up because usually they're too small to see anything anyway. So the number of moles is mass of a molar mass. The mass we are given is 100 grams, so it's 100. The molar mass of water, so MH2O is made up of two hydrogens and the molar mass of hydrogen is 1 plus 1 oxygen and the molar mass of oxygen is 16 so that is just 18. So the molar mass of H2O in this case is 18 and now we just need a calculator. Right so we can say 100 divided by 18 equals 50 over 9 which is useless which is 5.56 5.56 so therefore that is 5 comma 5 6 moles or 5 comma 5 6 moles right now it says methyl benzoate is a compound used in the manufacture of perfumes it is found that a sample 5.3 to 5 gram sample of methyl benzoate contains carbon of which there is 3,758 grams, hydrogen of which there is 0, 0,316 and oxygen of which there is 1,251. Okay, so let's define the term empirical formula. Empirical formula is just the formula of the compounds in their perfect ratio. In other words, if we had water, the empirical formula for water would be H2O. But you could also get H4O2 or you could get H6O3. These are all water except the fact is this is the empirical formula of water. Okay, so now it says determine the empirical formula of methyl benzoate. Okay, so the way we do this is we pretend that we've been given um, 100 grams. Okay, so first of all we need to change the no, we don't. So what we need to do is realize that we've been given 3.758 grams of carbon, 0.316 grams of hydrogen and 1.251 grams of oxygen. But we never ever work in grams. What do we work in? We work in moles. So we're going to divide each of these by their molar mass, okay, to get the number of moles. So I'm going to divide this by 12, I'm going to divide this by 1, and I'm going to divide this by 16, and that's going to tell me how many moles I've been given. So therefore we've got the calculator out. So we go 3, oopsie, we go 3.758 divided by 12 equals 0, 31. So that is 0, 31 moles of carbon. This is going to be 0, 316 and I just want to check something. Oh, 313. Okay, this is 313. And oxygen, we're going to divide by 16. So it is going to be 1,251 divided by 16, which is 0,078, 0,078. 
Now, whenever we do this, we're looking at a ratio, okay? But we never ever look at a ratio with these funny numbers. What do we always do? We always go 10 to 1 or something like that. So what do we need to do? We need to divide all of these by the smallest number so we can get a ratio with respect to 1. So we're going to divide this by 0, 078 because that's the smallest number, which means we're going to divide this by 0, 078 and we're going to divide this by 0, 078. So let's do that now. This is obviously 1. Okay, so let's use this in our calculator. So we've got 0, 316 divided by 0, 0, 078 and that is equal to 4, 0, 5. So it's 4,05. Let's do this one as well to see how much different it is. So you've got 0,313 divided by 0, 0, 078 equals 4, 0,01. 0,1. So I think those are close enough that we can round them. So therefore we're going to have C4 H4O and that is our empirical formula. It's C4 H4O. In other words, it's the basis for the methyl benzoate is the fact that it's got this basic basic ratio of carbons, hydrogens and oxygens. Now it says if the molar mass of the benz, methyl benzoate is 136 grams per mole, what is the molecular formula? It says what is the molecular formula? So we need to work out what this empirical formula is first. So we've got 4 times carbon which is 12 plus 4 times hydrogen which is 1 plus oxygen which is 16 4 times 12 is 48 plus 4 plus 16 which is 48 plus 20 which is 68 so the molar mass of this is 68 grams per mole but they've said that they've given us that the molar mass of this methyl benzoate, what it actually is, this is the mass of the empirical formula. The molar mass of methyl benzoate is 136. So what we're going to do is we're going to see what that ratio is. And we're going to go, okay, fine, 136 divided by 68. Well, 6 goes into 13 twice. It means that you have a 1 and that gives you, so it's going to be 2 times. Therefore, this is half of the molar mass of methyl benzoate, which means we need to double these. So it becomes C8H8O2. And that there is the molecular formula of methyl benzoate. It's not how it's arranged, it's the molecular formula. Now it says define the term limiting reactant. Okay, now again, like I've said before in my previous lessons, whenever they ask you to define something, they're basically telling you that that's what we're going to have to work with. So it says define the term limiting reactant. Well, limiting reactant is the reactant that basically restricts a reaction, restricts the amount of product that is formed, but it runs out first. Okay, that's what happens, the limiting reactant. Now it says iron and sulfur react together to form iron sulfide according to the following balanced equations. So they've balanced it for us, which is nice. It says cal calculate which of the two substances will be used up completely if you've got 20 grams of iron and 10 grams of sulfur are mixed and heated. Okay, so theoretically we've got one mole of iron reacts with one mole of sulfur to form one mole of iron sulfide. So the ratio here is 1 to 1. So what we need to do is find out how many moles we've actually been given of this. So the number of moles of Fe equals the mass over the molar mass and the mass we've been given is 20 and if you look on the periodic table the Fe is 20, 56 sorry the molar mass of Fe is 56. So we can pop that in our calculators and we can say 20 divided by 56 equals 0, 36, 0, 36. So that's the amount of moles being given of the iron. Now let's look at sulfur. 
Again, the number of moles of sulfur is equal to mass over the molar mass. And we've been given 10 grams of sulfur. And the molar mass of sulfur is 32. So we're going to again use our calculator. And we're going to go 10 divided by 32, which is 0,312. So it's 0,312. So now, do you see that the ratio was 1 Fe to 1 S? Okay, that means when I use up one mole of iron, I'm using up one mole of sulfur. We are given 0.36 moles of iron and we're given 0.31 moles of sulfur. So do you agree all the 0.31 moles of sulfur is going to use up 0.31 moles of Fe and leave 0.05 moles of iron left over? So it says calculate which of the two substances will be used up completely. Your sulfur is going to be used up completely. Okay, how many grams of the other substance are in excess? Well, we've already worked out we've got 0.05 moles. Okay, that's the moles. So to find the grams is very easy. All we have to do is multiply by the molar mass. So the number of moles, no, the mass, grams, equals the number of moles, which is 0.05, times 56. And so now we can have to get out our calculator. So we've got... 0.05 times 56, which is 2,8. So we're left with 2,8 grams of iron. Okay. And that is in excess. Right. Let's delete this and move on to the final question of this presentation. Now it says magnesium burns in air to form magnesium oxide according to the following balanced reaction. It's very nice when they do that. So if the percentage yield of the reaction is only 80%, calculate the mass of magnesium that needs to be burned to produce 30 grams of magnesium. Okay, so we want 30 grams. We want 30 grams of magnesium oxide. Okay, magnesium oxide. That's what we want. So do you see that the ratio of the moles is 2 to 2? Okay, right. So if we work out this number of moles, and then we can work out that amount of moles, and then we worry about the 80%. Okay, so other way, the other way of doing it is working out what it should be. If we can say, okay, well, 30 grams equals 80%, okay, then do you agree that 30 times by 100 over 80 is going to tell us what the theoretical yield is, the theoretical yield, it's probably easier if we do it this way, so let's do that, let's find out what a theoretical yield was, so we've got 30 times 100 divided by 80 equals 37.5. So theoretically, we should have got 37,5 grams of magnesium oxide, but we only formed 30. But it doesn't matter. We're going to use this 37,5 to work out how much we should have burnt, okay, to get that. Right. So we're going to say, well, the, it's 2 moles of magnesium goes to 2 moles of magnesium oxide. Oxide. So what we need to do is convert these, this 37.5 grams into moles because this is a mole ratio. It says two moles of magnesium theoretically is required to form two moles of magnesium oxide. So let's do that. And again, like I said, you need your periodic tables out. So number of moles is mass over molar mass. The mass is 37,5. The molar mass of magnesium oxide, magnesium is 24.3, 24,3 plus oxygen, which is 16. So now we need to pop that in our calculator. So we go 37,5 all over. 24,3 plus 16, close bracket, equals, 
and that's 0.93 moles. So that's 0.93 moles. So we have formed 0.93 moles of magnesium oxide, but the ratio is 2 to 2, which means that it's 1 to 1, which means that if we formed 0.93 moles of magnesium oxide, we have to have used 0.93 moles of magnesium. So therefore the number of moles of magnesium is 0.93, that's magnesium. The molar mass of magnesium is 24,3. Therefore we can work out the mass that is required, because calculate the mass, by using number of moles is mass over molar mass, where the number of moles times by the molar mass is the mass. So the number of moles is 0 0.93, sorry, times by 24,3. So let's just pop that in our calculator. So we've got 0 0.93 times 24.3 equals 22.599. Remember, we always round this up to two decimal places, but this 9 is going to push that up to a 0. So this becomes 22.6. So we need 22,6 grams of magnesium, of magnesium to produce 30 grams of magnesium oxide. Right, and that's how you do this question. Please, grade 11s, again, if you don't understand what's going on here, go back to the section that this is talking, that this is... Oh. Please, grade 11s, if you don't understand this, go back to the section that covers this work, go through it carefully, and then do the questions in the Tunable system to help you. Have a great day.